In the intricate network of the human body, stem cells are the silent architects directing constant renovation and repair of tissue. They play a pivotal role in the nervous system, holding the key to rejuvenation and regeneration of critical neural tissues. However, there's a delicate balance that when disrupted can inhibit, damage, or even ob obliterate the vital function of stem cells, preventing recovery from disease and nerve damage. So in part one of this two-part series, I'll teach you why stem cells are so important in healing tissues and nerves, what interferes with the stem cell's ability to execute repair and regeneration of the tissues, and how effective is stem cell therapy for nerves. Then in part two of our stem cell series, we'll cover simple, easy, and effective ways you can boost your stem cell production and recharge them for healing. You don't want to miss any part of this. It can make all the difference between your recovery and being stuck in misery. Health Warriors, Dr. C here. If you're ready to conquer your peripheral neuropathy and start living again, then make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click on that bell to get notified as soon as we publish new content. Now, let's dive in. Let's start with what the heck is a stem cell and why should you care? Stem cells play a crucial role in the body's tissue repair and regeneration capacity. They have the remarkable ability to repair themselves and replace lost and damaged cells. Take for example the skin. Your skin entirely renews itself every four to six weeks, and your liver can regenerate itself after injury or partial surgery in one month. Even red blood cells are fully replenished in four months. Stem cells are at the core of this remarkable function. Unlike other cells in our body, stem cells possess a unique and extraordinary capability. They have the power to transform into different types of cells, like muscle cells, red blood cells, nerve cells, and even brain cells. These muddy cells act as your body's internal repair system, tirelessly working away. They can divide and renew themselves for as long as a person or animal is alive, and thriving for that matter, and the big emphasis on thriving. They're responsible for the repair and regeneration of cells and organs throughout the body for your entire life. So how is it, in spite of these incredible cells, our bodies still break down and develop disease? Well, as we age, our system, or that is our stem cells, are not as effective in repairing tissues as they were in our 20s or even younger. Science has determined that there are many factors, including lifestyle choices, that impact the function and the ability of these cells. Here's how stem cells work. They perform a process of proliferation and differentiation. In simple terms, proliferation means that stem cells can multiply and make more of themselves. For example, if you have a supervisor or a foreman on a construction site and he begins to hire more and more workers to get the job done, that's proliferation. Differentiation, on the other hand, is like when those workers start to specialize in a specific trade or task. For instance, some of the construction workers may decide to specialize in concrete and foundation, while another group may specialize in framing. That's differentiation. When cells start to become specialized and become different types of cells like muscle cells, nerve cells, or skin cells. So while some cells keep multiplying or proliferating, others start to specialize in specific jobs or differentiating to help build and maintain your body. Now, a question I often get is, how effective is stem cell therapy? Well, although the FDA has only approved stem cell therapy for the treatment of blood and immune disorders, stem cell treatments are being used for a wide variety of conditions like rotator cuff injuries of the shoulder, degeneration, injuries of the knee, and even peripheral neuropathy. I've seen patients who have done well after receiving stem cell treatment for their shoulders and knees. However, I've yet to come across anyone who's actually fully recovered from peripheral neuropathy with stem cell treatment. In fact, we've had a number of patients who have come to us after having failed uh, stem cell treatment for their neuropathy. And unfortunately, this treatment isn't covered by insurance because it's considered experimental. 
Now, stem cell therapy isn't cheap by any stretch of the imagination. A single injection can cost up to $4,000, and for peripheral neuropathy, it can take multiple injections. Dr. Arm and I could never figure out the exact reason why stem cell treatments did well in shoulders and knees, but not in nerves. So we started digging into the research, and here's what we discovered. First of all, when a person has stem cell therapy, the cells are injected at the specific site of injury. So for example, if a person is suffering from chronic rotator cuff injury, the stem cells are injected directly into the shoulder joint. These cells don't have to travel very far to multiply and work their magic on the damaged tissue. Now, the same holds true for knee injuries. However, when you're faced with peripheral neuropathy, where the injury or damage could occur anywhere along the nerve pathway, if the stem cells are not injected at the precise area of injury, it's less likely that they will reach their target or destination to begin repair and regeneration. And remember, your body has more than 60,000 miles of nerves, or 100,000 kilometers. That's the equivalent of two and a half times of the Earth's circumference. And there are many factors that can prevent them from reaching their target site on the extensive network of nerves. On top of this, clinical studies have revealed that two to three weeks after the injection, the stem cells will, will revert back to their original numbers as if the population was never increased. Clearly, this is problematic for peripheral neuropathy sufferers because science has shown that it can take a year or longer for peripheral nerves to fully heal. And if these new stem cells are not staying viable past three weeks, they won't be able to repair or regenerate the damaged nerve tissue. Now, that's not the only challenge for these stem cells. Research has shown several lifestyle factors which can damage or hinder the stem cells function for repair and tissue regeneration including the nervous system. So let's peek at what some of these factors are. Now the first one is chronic stress. High levels of stress cause continual secretion of cortisol. Now cortisol reduces the ability of stem cells to migrate to the appropriate area in the body and actually proliferate. We also know that stress hormones like cortisol cause systemic inflammation, which reduces the ability of the stem cells to identify the tissue in need of repair and it prevents the migration to the target cells. Now, this is definitely a significant factor in why we don't see more peripheral neuropathy patients do well with stem cell therapy. Now, the next roadblock for stem cell function is obesity. Being overweight with a body mass index of 25 or greater, or being obese creates a pro-inflammatory environment that negatively affects stem cell function. Research has shown that overweight patients who undergo stem cell therapy typically have poorer outcomes because of the inflammatory environment, and it can compromise the regenerative capacity of stem cells. Now, thin people aren't necessarily in the safe zone when it comes to healthy stem cells, because research has shown that poor diet loaded with processed foods, sugar, and bad fats damage stem cell production and function. Now, the next lifestyle factor that blocks stem cell function is exposure to toxins. Exposure to heavy metals, environmental chemicals like BPA, pesticides, and air pollution can damage stem cells and potentially mutate their DNA. There's one chemical in particular we need to discuss, and that's BPA, which is found in plastics and can linings. This chemical has been shown to inhibit the proliferation or rapid multiplication of neural or nerve stem cells, meaning BPA will impede the formation of new healthy nerves. But don't breathe a sigh of relief just because your bottle says BPA free. What most people don't realize is when BPA is removed, the plastic industry replaces it with another family member like BPS or BPF. Now, these are very similar to BPA and equally as toxic and destructive. So ditch all the plastics, use a stainless steel bottle or a glass bottle, and please don't microwave your food in a plastic container. You're adding thousands of chemicals into your food. Better yet, ditch the microwave altogether. It's a significant health destroyer, but that's another topic for another day. Okay. Let's look at these next two factors that disrupt stem cell function, and that's the use of tobacco and alcohol. Tobacco, whether it's smoked or chewed, contains formaldehyde, arsenic, cadmium, benzene, and thousands of more chemicals. And these chemicals generate free radicals and cause oxidative stress. 
Drinking alcohol on a regular basis, even just one glass of alcohol daily, also results in free radical formation and oxidative stress. These lifestyle habits can have a direct toxic effect on stem cells, impairing their regenerative capacity. Regular alcohol consumption and smoking or chewing tobacco significantly diminishes the, the effectiveness in stem cell therapy. Now, the next factor that contributes to poor stem cell function is lack of physical activity. A sedentary lifestyle can decrease the number of available stem cells and impair stem cell function and regeneration capabilities. Regular physical activity supports new stem cell creation. Now, let's move on to the next big factor, and that's inadequate sleep. Inadequate sleep can greatly impede stem cell function. Lack of sleep or poor quality sleep can alter stem cell function, and it can interfere with proliferation and migration. Now, uninterrupted sleep, meaning you don't get up in the middle of the night to, you know, to use the bathroom, or good quality sleep, and that's getting eight hours of shut-eye, and waking up feeling rested and refreshed is imperative for the health of your stem cells. The last one, and a crucial one, is elevated blood sugar. I'm talking about both pre-diabetes and diabetes. Chronically elevated glucose levels can cripple stem cell function. So I can't impress how important it is to get your blood sugar under control. And yes, type 2 diabetes can be reversed. Health Warriors, stem cell therapy holds incredible future promise for the nervous system. But it's not quite there yet. But it's crucial to understand that there are things you can avoid in your life to improve the powerful function of your own stem cells. And in part two of this series, I'll go over things you can naturally and inexpensively do to supercharge your stem cell function and improve your ability to recover. Always remember, the power to heal is within you. The power that created the body can heal the body if we stop planting minefields and sabotaging our own health. Now, I have a favor to ask. It's our mission to create a neuropathy-free world, and we need your help to do that. Please share this video with anyone you feel that it could help, and don't forget to like us. If you wanna see more great videos to empower you on your road to recovery, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on that bell to get notified as soon as we publish new content. Remember, you're in control of your healing, and there are so many things you can do to help your body. Until next time, my friends, stay strong, stay positive, and I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. Impairing their regenerative, their regenerative. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> regenerative. Red blood. Red blood cells. What am I saying? Rube?